Hello everyone and welcome to Season 2 of To Mars and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. You do not have to have watched Season 1 to understand what will be going on in this video and in this season. I will explain everything. And everything begins with this ship. This is the St. Louis. Uh, we sent two Kerbals on board the ship to Mars, into Mars orbit, and then brought them back safely. They have disembarked and are now on the surface of the Earth. And this is in a very high orbit. Now we did all this in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. And so things will be a little bit different in 1.12 and hopefully better, smoother, maybe? I don't know. Uh, but I will try to do it in 1.12 since this is the latest version of KSP and we can, or latest version of KSP 1, and we will see how that works out for us. Uh, so the situation of the ship is as follows it has plenty of hypergolic fuels, but that is only useful for its RCS thrusters. It has two nuclear engines in the back and also two banks of ion engines. These are from Lackluster Labs. They represent 20 ion engines altogether. And so those do not have any fuel. We have no xenon gas left for those. And we also have no liquid hydrogen for the nuclear engines. So if we are going to refit this and send it on to Mars again with some more f you know, some more crew, it does have some extra food, water, and oxygen right now, and we could just probably put a little bit more on and they'll be ready to go. Uh, we do need to refuel it, and it's not good to have it in this high orbit in order to refuel it. We certainly don't want to send everything up again because it's 114 tons. Of course, some of that is the supplies that we have, and so we will... Yeah, we will send the fuel and then the habitat at least and the endurance module that I made which carries the supplies will continue to be usable. Uh, these are pass-through system modules which means that the Kerbals actually have to go inside and they can sort of take a seat. They have uh, little berths. There are four berths so four Kerbals could be in here and sort of store themselves in here. You see a lot of tanks here because in season one we made a big deal of manually bringing in the supplies and so we have actual care packages with the food we have EVA propellant tanks, we have oxygen tanks uh, this didn't leave a whole lot of room for the Kerbals to actually hang out though and so I've designed a new sort of system but we won't put that to use just yet that one has all the supplies out of the way it still makes sure that we have the space for the supplies properly but it allows them some more breathing room. We have this system and then we have another ship under construction in low earth orbit right now and it just has two of these NTP tanks, nuclear thermal propulsion tanks, that contain the hydrogen for the nuclear thermal propulsion engines, these nuclear engines here, which are based on NASA NTP architecture from 2019. Uh, so that ship just has those two tanks but we will eventually build it out and we want to use that to push our lander over to Mars. And so this ship, which will carry the Kerbals, will rendezvous with that ship and they will transfer into the lander and then make the landing. Uh, we will set that aside for now. The first thing we need to do is get the fuel over here. And so the xenon gas we will launch and we will launch it in the fashion that I launched stuff in the previous season so that I can talk about that. I decided to devote the previous season to demonstrating the effectiveness of a particular system and let's take a look at that in the VAB. Okay, so here we are in the VAB and we are using hangar extender so that we can see this properly. This is the launcher that we primarily used in season one. There's the Orion carrier plane. It is derived from the first stage that would have launched the Orion 3 space plane in 2001 A Space Odyssey. It was never shown in 2001 A Space Odyssey, but it was sort of conceptualized. And basically the Orion 3 space plane which docked to that ring station in 2001 Space Odyssey would ride on top of it and then proceed on to the station. This would be a recoverable first stage for it. And we are using it as a recoverable first stage. We will use it to launch the xenon that we need for the ion engines in the St. Louis. But we will not, unlike in the previous season, use it as our sole first stage. The premise of the first season was that we were going to use it as our only first stage 
and thereby demonstrate that we can construct a Mars mission with its limited capacity. Uh, it's not 13,000 tons, that's the pad, which I also made in Blender. I made the Orion carrier plane in Blender as well, uh, but it's about 1,300 tons on the pad, and it can carry about, it depends on what upper stage it's using. Uh, it can carry about 40 tons to low Earth orbit, and maybe a little bit more depending on the upper stage. Uh, we have a reusable methane oxygen stage for it that we use often, but because we're trying to get to a high orbit, I decided to use a hydrogen stage. These are just procedural tanks here. Uh, the adapter bit is mine, and the engines are mine. These are basically uh, hydrogen oxygen engines with very high specific impulse. It's uh, four, uh, sorry, 463, 463 second ISP, 360 kilonewtons. So they're basically souped up RL10s. They're big RL10s, if you will. On the tail of the Orion carrier plane, the Orion carrier plane uses methane oxygen and has nine engines. And basically these are uh, like Raptor engines. They're stage combustion methalox engines, but they don't have as much chamber pressure. We didn't need as much chamber pressure because we had plenty of room on the tail of this in order to fit the nine engines. And so they're lower chamber pressure, higher thrust. They're physically bigger too. So yeah, uh, that is, the, I've called them the Rex engine because they're bigger than Raptors. <laughs> so there we are. Uh, it is designed to launch out of either Brownsville or Tampico and cross the Gulf of Mexico. It will release the payload at a decent height, uh, well, the payload including the second stage, usually at around 200 kilometers, uh, but it will only be going 4,000 meters per only, going 4,000 meters per second. That's as fast as it can go without ripping apart it when it comes back down. So. 4,000 meters per second, and that will allow it to land at the Bahamas or at Cape Canaveral. So we have a runway at the Bahamas. We won't actually do the landing in this because we are going to be following the payload, but I've tested it in other videos on YouTube, and so you can check that out, Orion Carrier Plane Test or something like that. So yeah, we are going to proceed with this and launch the Xenon tank to the St. Louis. That entails certain complications. But we'll talk about that on the pad. Let's go. Okay, here is our launch pad at Tampico. The extra stuff has been added by Kerbal Constructs, though I added the terrain here and I made the city in the background there. And we are going to be launching so that the Orion carrier plane can get to the Bahamas, which is important. So it can only take a certain heading out of this. And that makes gives us a little bit of difficulty in order to rendezvous with the St. Louis because we can't launch directly into the St. Louis heading, right? We can't match its inclination directly. We're going to have to do that with the second stage. So that creates an extra burden for the second stage. But we'll just have to live with that. I'm not going to follow the Orion carrier plane down, but we will keep it on a trajectory that would allow it to be recoverable. And we will reserve the necessary fuel that we've tested with and all that sort of thing. Throttle up and ignition. And launch. Ooh. Well, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> you know, you can never have anything perfect around here. We have some extra wiggliness now, thanks to that. 78 degrees, I think, will be good for the Orion carrier plane. Okay, we are past the speed of sound. Okay, to mitigate g-forces and keep the balance, we turn off some engines here, and I roll in one degree increments to keep it well balanced, otherwise it tends to go a little bit wobbly. It is carrying a pretty heavy load on its back, and it's very good about keeping balanced with that, but we don't want to tempt fate here, as it gets lighter and the payload gets heavier, uh, heavier by comparison. Okay, separation, bearings off, and that's our load, heading 60, pitch let's say 10, and ignition. So here we're correcting some of the inclination. We could probably carry a heavier load than what we're carrying right now, we should do that. Okay, we are about to make orbit. We do have some residual inclination, but we'll deal with that once we boost up and get our apoapsis, which will be pretty high. 
Okay, we are in orbit 185 by 164, let's say. And this still had some extra left in it, so we could have carried a little bit more up top. Um, these do have some more ignitions. I guess we'll try to use it up. It's not a recoverable stage, unlike the Mephalox stage. I am developing a recoverable Hydrolox stage. And that'll be based on sort of a small venture star, or if you'd like, uh, X-33. But there's a whole business of mounting the payload on its nose. We, we're not going to have the payload inside, because the payload could be very much larger than we want it to be. And also, then you have to heat shield the payload bay. So I want a sort of uh, adapter structure on the nose of the little X-33 slash venture star. Uh, that will sit on top of the Orion carrier plane, and then the fairing in front of it, and it will dispose of the adapter uh, after it does uh, re-entry burn. So that's the idea there. But then we'll have a Hydrolox sort of recoverable stage, if we want to use that. Well, that's a nice enough approach there. So maybe a little bit more than 4,000 there, and 500 there, so a bit more than 4,500. Uh, we don't really see our full delta V here, and then it's going to be boil off, so not entirely clear how much we have, but I believe I packed enough. So let's try this before everything boils off. Uh, I'm a little late, it looks like. All right. I think it's probably reading the wrong time anyway. Okay. Oh. Let's control from this bit now. Oh, you can't get away. Get away. Wow. Not a huge amount of thrust with this little guy. And we don't have the node anymore. There's a tiny little 100 kill newton. It's basically an RL-10C. The only benefit of it over the RL-10C... Well, there's a lot of benefits. It's got throttling and it's got many ignitions, 60. Basically, uh, I should have said it's basically a uh, common extensible cryogenic engine. Uh, though not as efficient as the common extensible cryogenic engine, or CC. So we're carrying 2 million units of xenon gas. That amounts to, I think, 13 tons. The capacity of the St. Louis is uh, 7.2 million units of xenon gas. So we're not filling it up. But hopefully we can get enough so that it can get itself to a lower orbit at least. Okay, that should be good enough. We seem to have enough delta V, but it depends on boil off. And we do have it. I mean, it's going on right now. Let's see, our mid course adjustment is in a mere hour. So that's not too bad. Ah, uh, six kilowatts of heat penetration. Remember, kids, don't forget the MLI layers. Okay, ignition. It's just an inclination correction. Minor prograde. We're losing a bit too much. Even if we do a lot of it here and try to meet up with it over there, we're not going to have enough of the remainder, I don't think. Um, we could probably reduce the oxygen a little bit to balance it better. Ship manifest. This time I will have a list of my mods in the video description, but keep in mind, a lot of the stuff I made, so it's going to be a bit complicated. So oxygen, but I don't want to dump it too fast. Boy, is it boiling off. <laughs> 10 units per second. Let me just go 10 units per second. Oh, we're losing. Okay, but by the time more boils off of the hydrogen, it'll probably be balanced again. Okay. Well, my usual talent for having barely enough remains intact. In this version, I've decided not to bother with comms, and that's just so that we can get on with other things. Okay, ignition. Yep, there it is. We are within 100 kilometers now. Incidentally, the names of the ships I decided would be 
the locations listed in the song Route 66. <laughs> so uh, that was the naming convention for the ships for the series. So we've only got St. Louis and Joplin so far. I might skip some names if I don't think they work well as ship names. The only problem with this is I don't think we'll have enough to deorbit this. So that's a bit of a shame. I think things are pretty smooth around here though. No. Coming out of time warp, there's a pause. It's looking pretty smooth. I'm controlling from there. And there's a docking port that we can use that's sort of a utility docking port. That's over here. There's some radiators right around the docking port though. I hope there's enough clearance. Okay, it's nice to have all the normal tools again. Been playing KSP2, of course. Um, it looks like we don't have enough clearance with those radiators right there, so let me retract those. Nice to be back in the saddle, if you will. Though it does take a lot more time to do everything in Realism Overhaul and Real Solar System. The disasters are much quicker in coming in KSP2. Uh, are the solar panels going to be a problem? Uh, it's tough to say. Oh, well, okay. We docked. Okay, well, getting the xenon gas in. Right. Okay, just expending the rest of that. And Well, I'm not I'm definitely not gonna fall along with it and try and get it into some disposal orbit, so I'm just gonna stop it there. Now Well, I really should have sent it in the opposite direction because we're going this way as well. But yeah, we want to go retrograde, and we basically want to spiral down, because we want to be retrograde all the way around. We need to be in a nice circular orbit down below. We don't have enough right now to get all the way down, 2,700 meters per second. But anything that we do right now will make it easier for resupply to continue, and for us to bring more xenon gas up here. So. We will bring it down as much as possible. Now, we're not directly pointed at the other thing, so that's good. But we'll keep it targeted, I think. Well, yeah, ion engines. Now, for them to work in time warp, we use SAS. And let's see if they do their thing. Well, very, very slowly. It is a little bit lopsided. It's going to end up lopsided. You know, uh, maybe we should line up with the Joplin to make it easier to... I should have done that earlier when we were higher up. Easier to get to this. Well, we are certainly closer to Earth now, but we need to do this inclination adjustment. I'm hoping SAS can hold that maneuver. We'll see. Alright, we are spinning. Okay, yeah, trying to correct inclination with this is a pain, all right. I may, just for my sanity in this version, up the thrust of the ion engines. We're producing a total of 200 newtons right now with 20 ion engines. I mean, in a way, that's not unrealistic. I mean, we've got nuclear reactors back here powering them, mind you. They're not solar powered. They've got little reactors directly attached to them like R2-D2 units. But uh, yeah, two reactor units per pod there. Well, I think we should at least get our upcoming transfer windows all lined up. We've got one here. So we've got plenty of time to construct our vehicle. So we'll get that into a Kerbal Alarm Clock. And let's just say if we were going to send something out to Jupiter prospectively. Well, there's something around here a little bit sooner. Um, we don't need to go all the way down. Let's say no insertion burn. Yeah, we'll 
add that one in. So we should start sending stuff out to other places instead of just Mars. Might not, well, won't be Kerbals, but we could send some other assets out to make things easier. Looks like Ceres is coming up next, so we'll take a look at that. Yeah, I'm done with the inclination changes. Let's just go. Uh, it takes too long. We'll just go retrograde, bring it in, and the launchers will have to deal with it in this orbit. That's just how it's going to be. Probably there'll be a right timing for it. We just have to launch a little bit earlier than would be obvious or something like that. Okay, I think I'll leave 200 meters per second in here. We've spent some weeks bringing our orbit down. You can see where our lingering supply vessel was. That was our original orbit. And now we are in this blue orbit down here. And here is the ship. And let's get into the daylight side and have SA. Well, once I come out of time warp, I'll turn off SES and we'll get a good look at this. It's a little deceptive how close it is right now because the opposite side is very high up. But here we are over India, and it is much more accessible than it was before. So we'll continue to work on this. But for now, uh, our ship is in a lower orbit, and uh, we will continue with launching out of Tampico, with our Tampico space program, I guess, uh, here with Ray Zero Space. So now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.